I was sort of a smart, mouthy kid. And I had no brothers, so I think I was like my father's son. You know, he was very, he thought, everyone said I got my brains and bad manners from him. And he was very proud of me. And my mother kept sort of trying to get me to tone things down. And you catch more flies with honey and vinegar. And, you know, uh, uh, when I started dating, she said the thing you do is you don't talk. You just let them talk and say yes, yes, and they'll think you're a wonderful conversationalist. And, and all this struck me as very oppressive and obnoxious. I guess I was aware of all these restrictions my, my mother was trying to place on me to make me more feminine and more acceptable in society. Uh, but I, I resented her for doing it. I didn't see it as her being afraid that I would have a bad life if I didn't learn how to act like a girl. I came here in 1962 as an instructor in English. I was not conscious of being a feminist at that time, although uh, I really didn't see that I should have any different sort of career from a, the career a man would have, uh, but I just didn't think hard about those issues. Um, I came for what seemed as if it was going to be a good job. I was very pleased to have it. Uh, and at first it did seem, indeed, to be a very good job, uh, and this went on for several years. A new chairman was brought in from Louisiana, and uh, his m mission was to clean out the dead wood in the English department. And I had heard before he came that he was not a great um, fan of women uh, where he had been before, and the first thing he did was he told several of the men and all the women except me, that they're, who were untenured, that their contracts were now terminal. Anyway, uh, I did come up for tenure uh, and promotion. I did get an overwhelming vote in the department. And then he pulled a lot of strings and did a lot of crooked things. It's a long story to make sure that I wouldn't get the tenure and promotion. And at that point, I was very angry. So I went to the Human Relations Commission and the AAUP. And then finally, uh, a woman I knew who was a feminist and a, a young lawyer, very brilliant young lawyer. She was a, a feminist. I was not yet a feminist, but she really was. And she saw the whole thing as sex discrimination. It was very angry and offered to represent me and to get her firm to support the case as on a pro bono basis. And it was a real, well, it was a very big firm in the city. It was Pepper Hamilton and Sheets, which was a name to conjure with. And so I sued them with her help. And I also got involved with We Up Women for the Equal Opportunity at the University of Pennsylvania. And they supported my law case. And I did become a feminist crusader. We all come out of this individualistic, capitalist, competitive culture, regardless of what our politics are. And we were all out to do well for ourselves. We were put in such a tight place that we realized finally that we could none of us do well for ourselves unless we helped each other and did well for each other. I think that without that external pressure, there's more of that kind of pernicious competitive individualism now. And I think there's still enough sexism in the general culture that women do need a little extra help and who's the people who should give it to them are other women who have been in power. The best advice I can think of, but it's probably better for someone who's more au courant, would be pass it on. Some of the women of my generation did things that benefited the next generation, which benefited the next generation, which benefited them. And insofar as they are not suffering from the stuff we had to suffer from, they, they, I do think they have a duty to make sure that the next generation of women also is mentored and nurtured. I think every university should have a women's center. I think it's very, very important, especially a co-ed university. But um, I, think, I think it's important that women have a place where they can go, where women's concerns are, are the, the main priority, where they can go for help, where they can go to give help, where they can go for solidarity and sisterhood. There is still really ugly, bad stuff going on, and we need a woman's center to confront it and take care of it.